while neural networks cover a much richer families of models, we can begin thinking of the linear model as a neural network by expressing it in the language of neural networks. To begin, let's start by rewriting things in a layer notation. Deep learning developers like to draw diagrams to visualize what is happening in their models. In this simple diagram, we depict a linear regression model as a neural network. Please know that these diagrams highlight the connectivity pattern, such as how each input is connected to the output, but not the values taken by the weights or biases. For a neural network, the inputs are x1, x2, all the way to xd. So the number of inputs of feature dimensionalities in the input layer is d. The output of the neural network model is O1. So the number of output in the output layer is just one. Please know that the input values are all given and there is just a single computed neuron Focusing on where computation takes place, conventionally, we do not consider the input layer when counting layers. That is to say, the number of layers for this neural network is just one. We can think of linear regression models as neural networks consisting of just a single artificial neuron or as single layer neural networks. Since for linear regression, every input is connected to every output. In this case, there is only one output. We can consider this transformation as a fully connected layer. Let's try to take a look from the biological perspectives. The idea behind artificial neural network is that it is possible to mimic certain parts of neurons, such as dendrites, cell bodies, and axons using simplified mathematical models of what limited knowledge we have on their inner workings. Signals can be received from dendrites and sent down the axon once enough signals were received. This outgoing signal can then be used as another input for other neurons, repeating the process. Some signals are more important than others and can trigger some neurons to fire easier. Connections can become stronger or weaker. New connections can appear while others can cease to exist. We can mimic most of this process by coming up with a function that receives a list of weighted input signals and output some kind of signal. If the sum of this weighted input reach a certain bias, please know that this simplified model does not mimic neither the creation nor the destruction of connections between neurons and ignores signal timing. However, this restricted model alone is powerful enough to work with simple classification tasks. Now, let's deep dive a little bit into a single perceptron. Perceptron is a linear binary classifier. Also, it is used in supervised learning. It helps to classify the given input data. But actually, how does it work? Let's take a look at the structure of a perceptron. A perceptron consists of four parts. Input values or input layer weights and biases, net sum, and activation function. 
in the first step, all the input X are multiplied with their corresponding weights W, and it will add all the multiply values and call them weighted sum. Then an activation function will be applied on the weighted sum in order to perform nonlinear transformation. So how about weight and bias? Weight shows the strength of a particular input. And bias allows us to shift the activation function curve up and down. Now let me ask a question. Where do we apply perceptron? If you can recall, in topic one, we talk about the concept of supervised learning and classification models. A perceptron is usually used to classify the data into two parts. Therefore, it is also known as a linear binary classifier. A single layer perceptron is the basic unit of a neural network. In another word, the artificial neural network is a combination of a large number of neurons. And therefore, we can also call it multi-layer perceptron. And it is one of the most useful types of neural network. The predictive capabilities of neural networks comes from the hierarchical or multi-layer structure of these networks. The data structure can learn to represent features at different scales or resolutions and combine them into higher order features. For example, from lines to a collection of lines and to shapes. In this sense, neural networks learn a mapping. Mathematically, they are capable of learning any mapping function and have been proven to be a universal approximation algorithm. Let me try to explain the neural network structure in details. The first layer that takes input from the data set is called input layer. Because it is exposed part of the network, often a neural network is drawn with an input layer with one neuron per input value or column in the data set. These are not neurons as described above, but simply pass the input value through to the next layer. Layers after the input layer are called hidden layers because they are not directly exposed to the input. The simplest network structure is to have a single neuron in the hidden layer that directly outputs the value. Given increases in computing power and efficient libraries, very deep neural network can be constructed. Deep learning can refer to having many hidden layers in the neural network model. They are deep because they would have been unimaginably slow to train historically, but may take seconds or minutes to train using modern techniques and hardware. The final hidden layer is called output layer, and it is responsible for outputting a value or vector of values that correspond to the format required for the problem. The choice of activation function in the output layer is strongly constrained by the type of problem that we are modeling. And we will talk about activation function later. Multi-layer perceptrons can capture complex interactions among our inputs via their hidden neurons, which depend on the values of each of the inputs. We can easily design hidden nodes to perform arbitrary computation. For instance, basic logic operations on a pair of inputs. Moreover, 
for certain choice of the activation function. It is widely known that MLPs are universal approximators, even with a single hidden layer network, given enough nodes and the right set of weights and biases, we can model any function, though actually learning that function is the hard part. You might think of your neural network as being a bit like the C programming language. The language, like any other modern language, is capable of expressing any computable program. But actually, coming up with a program that meets your specification is the most challenging part. Furthermore, just because a single hidden layer network can learn any function, doesn't mean that you should try to solve all of your problem with single hidden layer network. In fact, we can approximate many functions much more compactly with using deeper or wider networks. If we try to visualize the neural network vertically, multi-layer perception is to stack many fully connected layers on top of each other. Each layer fits into the layer above it until we generate outputs. We can think of the first L minus one layers as our representation and the final layer as our linear predictor. The architecture is called as multi-layer perception, abbreviated as MLP. This MLP has four inputs, three outputs, and its hidden layer contains five hidden units. Since the input layer does not involve any calculations, producing output with this network requires implementing the computations for both the hidden and output layers. Thus, the number of layer in this MLP is two. Please know that these layers are both fully connected. Every input influences every neuron in the hidden layer. And each of these in turn influences every neuron in the output layer. However, as suggested, the parameterization cost of multi-layer perception with fully connected layers can be prohibitively high, which may motivate trade-off between parameter saving and model effectiveness even without changing the input or output size. 